My name is Ted Barris. At the time he wrote this letter in a time of war, my father, Alex Barris, a well-known Canadian journalist, author, and broadcaster, was 23. He was fighting in Europe. He was a sergeant medic in the U.S. Army at the time. He has served through the winter of 1945 in the Battle of the Bulge, driving the German offensive in the Ardennes back into Germany. The war in Europe, however, is almost over. He's on leave in Dusseldorf, Germany, and he's catching up on unanswered mail, including a letter from one of his old school chums, 22-year-old Kula Kontazoglis. She's back in New York City. They had grown up together. Their families had known each other all through their youth. In this letter, my dad, Alex, thinks just maybe he might make it through this awful war. He dreams about what he's always wanted to do with his life, and he misses the old days at high school with Kula and wonders whether maybe she might be interested in carrying on a friendship if he gets back. The letter is dated April the 3rd, 1945. Dear Kula, your most welcome letter arrived today, and its first words made me feel so guilty that I determined to write immediately. I've been so unforgivably rude in not writing for so long, but my reasons are as legitimate as possible, army life being what it is. There have been times when I couldn't even write home regularly. Irene has frequently mentioned seeing you. Irene was my dad's sister, also back in New York City. And she scolded me for not keeping in touch with you. I know she's right, too, for we have known each other so long. Yet I never saw you very often after I finished school. I remember many mornings when we would meet on our way to school at the L station. That's the elevated train system in New York City. Weren't those the good old days? Tell me, Kula, do you ever miss your high school days? I do, terribly. I had so much fun then, even though it seems like ages ago. I remember many pleasant things about those four years. Perhaps it's just being over here, being away from home so long, that I've learned to appreciate the things I once took for granted. At that, I've been pretty lucky. I've seen lots of guys come and go, and they were in considerably worse shape in that latter act. I go on and on and have high hopes of continuing to do so, of course. My fingers are crossed. My time on leave is occupied with such pastimes as reading, writing, and playing volleyball. I'm reading something called The Great American Novel by Clyde Davis. The title fascinates me, possibly because I have ambition to be a writer someday. Of course, every person with such ambition plans to write the great American novel someday. From where I sit, however, the chances of my becoming a writer seem pretty slim. But I can dream, can't I? Enough about me and my ideas. How are you? I've been out of touch with you for so long. I'd like to know what you're doing these days, whether you're working or going to school. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you write again and sort of bring me up to date on what you're doing lately, I'll promise to answer and keep doing so whenever you write. Fair enough? Yes, I'll fold up for the night. So till I hear from you again, regards to all the old members of the clan, and write soon. Sincerely, Alex. In December 1945, safely through the war, awarded a bronze star for his meritorious service in the U.S. Army. My dad, Alex, boarded a Liberty ship in Marseille, landed back in New York City. Within a year, he was writing stories from New York City for the Toronto Globe and Mail. He was also rekindling his relationship with Kula Contazoglis. The Globe offered him a reporting job in Toronto in 1948. He took it. He married Kula, came to Canada, and I came along the next year.